I walk into the room in my shapeless, faded blue gown and crinkly paper-like slippers like it's nothing. No fanfare. I just walk right in and get up on the table like they tell me to do, while they all go about their surgeon-like business, organizing trays of stainless steel tools, moving IV stations around, gathering stacks of white, sterilized pads. Bright light bulbs encased in round aluminum bowls shine down from above and glint off the freshly mopped floor. My brain registers the faint smell of antibacterial soap. Just another day in the OR. I had top surgery on November 8, 2018, and every time I look in the mirror, I'm amazed at the flatness of my chest. It's the man's chest I always wanted. Or, you know those female Olympic gymnasts in the tight bodysuits? It's like that, and it's a dream come true. And yet, I don't identify as a man. I don't want to transition or go on testosterone. I don't mind if I'm misgendered, and in fact, I kind of like being read as male, when it happens, but it rarely does. I'm almost always read as female. I use she, her pronouns. I have a feminine name, which I like. I have a vulva. At nearly 48, I still get my period once a month, and I'm mostly okay with that. And you know those fashion magazines where they ask you, what's the one makeup item you can't do without? For me, the answer has always been mascara. And I also love wearing men's undershirts, button downs, sweaters, and t-shirts. And I love my new chest. When I was a kid, I went around often shirtless in the summer until one day I didn't. I don't recall if anyone said anything directly to me. I just knew that it wasn't okay anymore. I didn't have the words for why. I just knew I had to cover up. Then I entered puberty. I felt simultaneously ashamed and proud when I first started wearing a training bra to school. I felt like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, being a feminine girl. But what was I training for exactly? Training for a life to be bound up, literally and figuratively, by certain clothes, ideas, words, roles, Behaviors, careers, relationships? Training to become someone that everyone just assumed I would eventually be, a woman? Wasn't I just going to end up being a woman regardless of whether or not I wore a training bra? Maybe. Maybe not. And maybe society knew more about assigned gender and gender performance and social construction than it was willing to admit. Maybe the use of the word training was really what was already happening, what had been happening from the moment I exited my mother's body at birth, and what would continue to happen for many, many years to come. Until the day I started to question what it meant to be referred to as girl, woman, feminine. Until the day I started to reconsider my body and these mounds of flesh that hung from my rib cage. As my surgery date drew closer, I was plagued with thoughts and questions and feelings. They punctuated my mind and my body with increasingly rapid fire. Who am I going to tell about this surgery, and how, and why? What if after my breasts are gone, I decide I want to start taking testosterone and transition to male? What if my cis women friends think this is an act of betrayal of all things feminine? What if my partner thinks my scarred, flat chest is ugly, and I have to keep my shirt on when we're being intimate in order to hide the Frankenstein evidence of this decision? What if one day while I'm walking down Bloor Street in Toronto, My body suddenly splits open at the incision site, and my insides spill out all over the sidewalk in front of people. What if I accidentally die on the operating table? I was parented into queerness by the second wave feminist movement. In the 90s, thousands of other queer and lesbian and bi-identified women and me were mesmerized by this 5'2", punky-looking, hairy-armpitted, yodeling folk singer named Ani DeFranco, who had a strange haircut and an acoustic guitar and sang about issues that meant something to us. Songs like Blood in the Boardroom, and I was all like, my woman's body is amazing. Yeah, Ani, I can make life. I can make breath too. Except for the fact that giving birth and having children and being called mom was never something I wanted. But at least I could now feel good about having a body that could do that. Finally, I could be proud about my body, about menstruation, about my vulva, But still, I had these breasts. I didn't really think about it much back then. It never occurred to me that I didn't really like them. It also never occurred to me that my breasts would continue to grow in size as I got older, which, much to my horror, they did. Then I really started thinking about it. I started to wonder about 
how that part of me fit into my gender identity. For a while, I tried to see if butch or femme fit, but neither did. They both seemed too gendered to me. I always felt more like both and neither and somewhere in between. Then I started to find myself in conversations with queer and trans youth who talked about things like using they pronouns, wanting top surgery, and going on tea. I started hearing phrases and words like gender dysphoria, gender queer, agender, cisgender, gender fluid, non-binary, but still these words didn't feel like mine. Then one day I was walking between classes at University of Toronto with a couple of colleagues and we were talking about gender things and the topic of top surgery came up. And I mentioned how I would love to have that procedure, but I didn't think it was possible because I didn't identify as trans. And my colleague turned to me and stopped and looked right at me and said, what are you talking about? Of course you can have that surgery done. It's your body. The gender train makes all the stops into the station, my friend. And in that moment, it was like somebody just opened a door for me and welcomed me in to a wide, endless space. No questions no accusations, no confusion, just, you can do this. I started crying. That was last spring. As I write this story, it's been five weeks to the day since I had the surgery. One day while we were driving to the grocery store, (laughs) my partner said to me, you know, Your body is kind of hybrid now. Hybrid? Yeah, I like that. I smiled at her. Gender hybrid. I like it because it's a way to describe how I feel inside and how I look on the outside that isn't someone else's label or phrase. It comes from someone who isn't married to certain discourses or ideas. It's a description that comes from someone who loves me and who sees and feels and understands that people can be both, that I can be both, and neither, and somewhere in between. Fight like